So yes, as James says, there's only one R in Pfizer, but really the question that I'm asking you today is, is there really? Um, so let's carry on from here. I describe myself as a professional geek. And for me, that means that I am at the geeky end of the spectrum compared to most of my colleagues. My job is really to help them find the right tools, workflow, and systems to help them deliver more efficiently and more effectively. But also, I know those tools and systems well enough that I can have intelligent conversations with the Pfizer Digital IT organization. Um, and so because they need help understanding the domain, and of course, the domain need help to kind of understand the mechanisms and the, the IT systems that sit behind all this. So let's think about R as one of those tools. And here's the question that you might be asking yourself. So how many people use R at Pfizer? My honest answer, I no idea, right? But before this talk, I went and I pulled the Pfizer software delivery system and saw how many people have downloaded R from there for their desktop. And the answer is about 1,500 people, OK? That's quite a lot. It's not just me supporting all those 1,500, but it kind of feels like it sometimes. And the reality of the situation is, who knows who's out there using R within a big organization like Pfizer? If it's a smaller organization, sure, you might know individually who's using R and, and how they're using it and what they're using it for. But in a company the size of Pfizer, it's really tough because I know what my immediate colleagues are doing within statistics or within pharmacometrics modeling and simulation, but there's a whole world of people out there who might be using R for all kinds of stuff. The thing I care about is making sure that if colleagues are using R for production use, for regulatory submissions, I want them to use a specific version of R, a specific version of the, the packages and versions of those packages, and as well as package set. But again, in 15, across 1,500 people in the, in the company, I just don't know. I can't tell you. What I can also tell you, though, is, is looking across that range of different R versions that people have downloaded and are using on their desktops, there's large heterogeneity. The bars in blue here that are uh, described as qualified, those are versions of R where I've spent time working on what package set goes along with that, what versions of those packages are going to be delivered, and how. So I help write the installation packages and uh, the installation R scripts to help get colleagues that set of R packages. But the other ones, the unqualified ones, I don't know who requested them. I don't know what's happening with those versions. I'm not supporting them. And this is really the problem that I'm trying to, to address today. Now, even when I know the individuals that are using R, there are tensions, right? Because for some colleagues, they want to use R to do quick stuff. They want to use it to produce shiny apps, dashboards, to just do some data science pipelines, deliver results for their projects. Right? So they want latest, greatest packages because nothing's going out to regulatory agencies. They just want to de deliver on their commitments. But then there's another set of colleagues who are doing using R for regulatory use. And for those colleagues, it really matters that they know exactly what they're getting. They're getting the production version of R. They know exactly what packages are in there, what versions, so that when they produce their output to go into regulatory submissions, they know that it will be reproducible today, tomorrow, in 10 years' time. And that's a big ask to keep the, the version sol solid for that length of time, but that's what's expected of us. So these are your tensions between quick and dirty, just do stuff for today for my project versus make sure it's reproducible in that long term. Now, the problem is that colleagues of mine also flip between these two. They come to something like R and Pharma and they go to the workshops. So they want the latest, greatest versions of the packages for their workshops. But then next week, they might go back to their desks and be preparing something for regulatory submission. 
So you can see how you would flip between these two states fairly quickly. And that causes problems. And it causes problems for maintenance, and it causes problems for support and all kinds of other reasons. Now, let's imagine this kind of classification here, where on one axis, we've got adding packages being easy, uh, and at the other end, adding packages is hard. Similarly, we've got a, a, the other orthogonal uh, aspect here says, on the one hand, there's an open environment. On the other hand, there's a controlled environment. So the sandbox is up here in this top right. It's the ability to get stuff done, to do that quickly for anything that isn't production. So they want to have an environment where they can add what they need quickly, get what they're doing done today, and get it out to their customers. On the, ortho, on the complete opposite end, we have the production version of R. And here, what we're talking about is the regulatory work, the GXP work. It needs to be reproducible. That needs to be a well-controlled, locked-down, documented uh, environment for people to work in. Okay, And again, reproducible in the long term. If you're on either of those boxes, life is good, provided you're not swapping between too quickly. If you're in the top left, that's a danger zone because what you're saying is, although it might be a controlled environment, adding packages is easy. And so in that circumstance, it's very easy and very quick to be, get into a situation where your work isn't reproducible anymore, it's non-compliant, you have a lot of work to do to try to reconcile what package versions you're using and everything else like that. The opposite side there down in the bottom right is saying, well, that's also a danger zone. That's because if you have an open environment like your desktop, but adding packages is hard, people will find workarounds. If, if you're in that situation, you're liable to get frustrated quickly and you'll start working outside the system and things will break really quickly. Now, let's roll back a little bit and let me tell you about how we used to manage our for regulatory reuse and for desktops and everything else. So what we used to have is multiple versions of R sitting in its different environments. So one on our high performance compute grid, another on the desktop, another sitting behind a shiny server. Each of those versions of R had their own CRAN snapshot. So their own package set and package versions. And we had to go through the process of qualifying each of those versions of R separately. And it was a lot of work. And it seemed to me in the past that the minute that you finish qualifying your release of R, the next release is out. I can't tell you the number of times I cursed the email from the CRAN project telling me that a new version of R was come out because I'd only just finished releasing the previous version. The other thing to point out is, as I've said previously, in an organization the size of Pfizer, who knows how other people are using R? So the, the circle doors here, I know about, I can control somewhat, but out there in the big organization, people might be doing whatever, I don't know. And so I can't promise that there weren't other versions of R out there that someone else was handling the qualification and validation of those versions. I just don't know. Now, let's look at the deployment pathway to getting to production R. And some of these things have already been touched on today. So first of all, you need to choose your R version. That's not essentially trivial, but you know you need to take a little bit of thought about that. Do you want the 4.0 version or are you going to wait for 4.0.1? Things like that. Then you choose your packages. What we've decided is that we go with a package set. So we're not delivering everything on CRAN. We're just picking out the things that colleagues have told us they need to get their work done. That goes into the package set, and then we choose the package versions or the CRAN snapshot that locks in what versions are going to be delivered with that particular version of R. We build that and deploy it. And then the next step is, as was discussed previously today, about pre-test documentation. So you define what are we going to test, what are our expected results. Then you need to run your tests and compare your test results against those expectations. Then once you've got that, you compare versus your expectations and you 
note down in your documentation what are your test findings. And finally, you deploy into production. The catch is that as you're doing that comparing of results against your expectations, you may have to go back and tweak something and get a different version of a package and rebuild and retest and update the documentation several times. That is a lot of effort. And that effort isn't only just down to you choosing package versions and running tests. If the high performance compute grid decides to upgrade the OS kernel, you're going to have to do that whole process all over again. And if you've got manual steps in there, life becomes very tricky and very uh, labor intensive very quickly. So what we did at Pfizer is that we, de we developed and deployed a testing framework. And the testing framework automates the bits in green there. So the whole pre-test documentation through to post-test documentation, as well as running those tests and comparing the results. And that just takes that whole element out of the game, automates it, and makes life so much easier because we're not then manually having to compare items. Now, that somewhat resolves tensions in the production version of R, but how do we handle the sandbox as well? Well, what we decided is that we would provide both your sandbox latest, greatest version, but also the production R, but we would manage and support only one of those. Now let's look at what we have today. So what we have is that we've built and deployed, uh, and through that process I've just described, Docker containers or singularity containers with R and package set and package versions. And then we deploy these wherever we need them. So we have Docker containers running behind our Studio Server Pro or our Studio Workbench, as it's now called. We grab package versions from our Studio Package Manager. We deploy the same container to our high performance compute grid. And the joy there is that we do the whole uh, production R testing, documenting, qualification process once, and then we deploy R wherever it's needed, including on the desktop. Now, that's really great because it now means that when I fire up R on my desktop, I know that I'm using the same packages, the same package versions, the same R version, the same qualified R version as is being used out on the high performance compute grid. So I can develop locally and then run out in the high performance compute grid. I can also develop locally on RStudio Workbench and deploy to RStudio Connect and be confident that that deployment of the production app is going to work. RStudio Package Manager also helps out enormously with respect to this production versus sandbox. Because what we have here is that we have a snapshot of the package set and package versions that's linked to that production R, but we also have the latest greatest from CRAN. And what that means is that we can deploy to desktop, colleagues can go and either pick up their uh, production ready set of packages or the, the set from CRAN, the latest greatest. What this means then is that you're <clears throat> not the Docker desktop, but your plain vanilla R4.1 desktop becomes your sandbox. And it becomes up to the individual user to manage that area. And if it works, that's great. And I support getting colleagues started with a kind of starter pack of packages. But after that point, it's up to them. And if it works, that's fantastic. But if it doesn't work, we burn it all down. We, we just delete out all the packages and we start over. right? And that then means that in the desktop version of R, you're just playing. You're getting the latest greatest from RStudio uh, Package Manager. You're loading that up. You can use session info and all those other good tools to help make sure that you're doing the right things. But ultimately, if it goes wrong, burn it down. Now, fire prevention is a big aspect here. Up until this point, my colleagues haven't really had to think about managing their own package sets. And so we will be encouraging them rather strongly to think about using our studio projects and package management tools like RNV or PackRat or similar tools like that. And this is something new for them, 
But I, again, I think it balances up this sandbox use of R versus production. And we need to just reassure them and say, if it's important to you to be able to come back and reproduce it, you might want to use a R Studio project. You might want to use RN to snapshot your package set. So back to this two by two matrix. Up here in the top right now, this is our desktop R with our Studio Package Manager and a package uh, management tool like RN. That's your sandbox. Down in the bottom right, through containers like Docker, we're using we we get our production R. The top left now, the controlled environment where adding packages is easy, is not allowed. We just lock down the production R and we say you will not add packages to that container. The bottom right is missing. We don't have an open environment where adding packages is hard because we've got the desktop and adding packages is easy. So that alleviates these problems in other uh, places. But don't forget that R and packages are free as in beer and as in speech. So if you're not ready to provide colleagues with package sets and package versions and packages that they need for their day-to-day -day job, they will go out and find other ways to resolve that problem. So in putting R into production, we are setting expectations with colleagues about what production R means and making our expectations really clear and unambiguous that you will not use desktop R for regulatory work. And also that if you're trying to publish from your sandbox on your desktop to a production server like our Studio Connect, we don't guarantee anything because the package versions you have locally may not match what's on our Studio Connect and you may run into trouble. But that's just a caveat that you're going to have to, to live with. If you want to go from a production R into a production app, Shiny app or dashboard, uh, in RStudio Connect, then use the production version of R through RStudio Server Pro or some other means. What I found is that once you have a production version of R in a container and things like this, many places in the organization will start knocking on your door and saying, hey, I hear you have a version that, that's ready for production. Could I use it? And that's lovely because it then taps into that expanding group of R users out there that you've never met. Great way to meet people. But ultimately, no matter what we do, we need to make sure that we are able to move quickly or deploy quickly without breaking anything existing. We want that reproducibility because many of my colleagues have discovered months later, years later, someone may come and knock on your door and say, that analysis you did back then, I just need to have it updated with today's data. Or can we take another look at it together? And if you're not ready for that discussion, that's a very awkward place to be. But also we need to be able to support all colleagues, no matter what they're doing, whether they're in research and wanting the latest, greatest version package of today, or those colleagues who care about a very well-controlled, well-qualified system. With that, I I'm gonna finish and I'm going to acknowledge the great work of these uh, Pfizer colleagues who've helped develop the systems and support the systems uh, through my time here. So thanks very much.